Hello guys, my name is Amit. So today we are going to discuss book my show or Ticketmaster High Level Design. So this is a Google interview question. I have made uh, a video earlier on uh, the back of envelope calculation. So this is uh, the page, a GitHub page on which I am writing the book my show design. So on back of envelope calculations, we have already covered in the previous video. The requirements are this, that uh, it should show the movies in the city, option to select the country, state, uh, city and the movie name in the city should be provided. It should ask for some permissions. The portal should ask for permissions to detect the location. Then it should show the theater name. Uh, then it should show the theater timings. Uh, the movie timings and then uh, as per the movie timings it should select uh, provide the seat layout number of seats available then uh, it can hold the booking for five minutes it's it's bigger it may be one minute or two minutes after seat selection day payment should be made and the ticket should be sent via phone or email so we have already covered back of envelope calculations in one previous video so today we are going to discuss about the high level design so how i follow how i approach is that i design a system for one user then I scale it from 100 to 1 million or maybe more users so in this case for the one user um, it's it's very simple that there is a server standalone server a user is connected to the server with LAN server stores stores all the seats theater listing of worldwide theaters user can log in into the server does the seat booking prints the seat number and date and he, he's gone but in case of uh, somewhere around 1 million users this is basically the system design <clears throat> so here it is let us start from step number one here so initially what happens is that uh, it, what might be happening is that uh, the book my show or the ticket master representative comes to the theater owner and he will he will create a layout uh, of theater on book my show or ticket master portal because um, the representative might be coming that's my assumption then to the theater owner uh, the URL is provided to the theater owner on which the theater owner can log in assign shows show timings cost per seat and if needed if someone walks into the theater to book the seat he can book the seat and it gets updated automatically on the onto the book my show database this book my show database is updated with a online bookings as well so this is the same database now let's start with a user who is um, connected to the internet uh, he logs into the browser so when he types uh, https bookmyshow.com uh, then this host name that is bookmyshow.com is uh, fed into the browser and browser tries to get the ip address using dns so this is the very first step so the DNS query goes to the internet service provider, then authoritative DNS server responds with a A record. So the detailed steps are here. I have just noted down. <coughs> so when in a browser, somebody types in, let's suppose some bookmyshow.com or something similar, then browser searches for the hostname to IP mapping because uh, he cannot browser cannot reach hostname with the hostname only it will need a unique IP address first it searches in the browser local local cache doesn't find then it searches in computers local cache doesn't find so it sends a DNS query message to the internet service provider uh, which provides the internet then if ISP cannot find ISP sends back IP address of recursive DNS server so why we are doing DNS query because uh, we need to convert the host name that is BMS into the unique IP address to which the uh, HTTPS or the request may be uh, web socket request can be sent then uh, the DNS query is sent by web browser to the recursive DNS server if it cannot find the recursive DNS server if cannot find uh, in cache IP to the hostname mapping then it sends to the root, root uh, name server so root name server finds the top level domain server which handles com 
or maybe uh, org or edu and then this uh, root name server sends the authoritative ip dns server back to the client it does a record query to authoritative dns server and gives the a record back so the point here is that uh, uh, a record is ip the host name mapping and a record query in a record query we provide host name and we provide a uh, ip address back so the first step is done now uh, the browser opens a web socket um, to connect to the ip address now in this case there can be a forward proxy in uh, forward proxy in front of the browser so what is a forward proxy forward proxy is a node which sits in front of the client machines and why we need forward proxy that for some time for some reasons like if we are sitting in a school or company uh, forward proxy can be used as a firewall to limit access to the internet even it protects the identity online for example if you are connecting to a vpn so the vpn gateway is a sort of forward proxy here so forward proxy can be there <coughs> Now let's suppose, um, now the important node here is a CDN. So we can assume that AWS CloudFront we are using here. So CDN is a cache server which is located near to the user. Just a second guys. Sorry. So CDN is basically CDN is basically a cache server. So uh, it's it's used for caching. So why caching? It helps improve the speed by storing a copy of content locally. Uh, so what happens is we have different kinds of cache. We have a cache server that is we say it as a CDN that is content delivery network, or we we can say it as ad server or web proxy or anything. So it stores the data near to the client or the browser so so that user request and responses does not need to travel on the onto the internet so amazon netflix you all use a cdn so this, this cdn actually lies near to the user and away uh, means data center uh, is a separate node while cdn is a separate node on cdn uh, we can place uh, um, AWS WAF or Shield for the security. We can place AWS Lambda for doing the fast processing. And either we can do any authentication mechanism we can use. We can use Kerberos or S3 Auth we can use for AWS. So in this case, in step four, CDN provides the book my show URL here. This goes. Now on book my show, let's suppose the user um, selects the seat and the theater name so user gives the theater unique code this browser uh, so the client logic here on the book my show will give unique code of theater number of seats and show timing now the cdn need to forward this information to the nearest data center because cdn is just a cache but this information needs to be updated in the database so this goes through the internet on internet there will be routers uh, using the forwarding or routing tables the path will be find, found now it reaches the data center so let's suppose there is a data center in India at the head of a data center we'll have a API gateway um, this is again a AWS component after API gateway we'll have SSL terminators so SSL terminator might be using some uh, some some security card maybe uh, maybe some uh, encryption decryption card that is kvm card we can say kvm nitrox card sort of so whenever the https request comes in it decrypts the packet it chops off the https ssl header out of it and converts it in, into http because if https encrypted packet is provided to the application server it will not be able to see it then after the SSL terminator, we'll, we'll have a load balancer. We can deploy any of the AWS. We can deploy the Amazon ELB, that is Elastic Load Balancer. It selects the app server based on the hash-based scheduling algorithm. So, uh, load balancers can have different uh, scheduling algorithms involved. If I have, uh, okay, I have not taken up. Uh, 
just a second. Okay. So these are the scheduling algorithms for the load balancers. We can have a round robin algorithm. We can have least connection algorithm, least time. That is, um, we can send a request to the server, which is selected a formula that combines the fastest response and the fewest active connections. Then in this case, it can use hash. So it distributes the request based on the key, uh, based on key you, you define, such as IP address or the client URL. Why I'm saying that in this case, hash would be useful because uh, the data center and the nodes might be if if the servers are located near to the user which is requesting the book my show URL or trying to do a booking then it will be faster so let's suppose it does uh, select the hash uh, select the uh, app server so this is a rack of app servers this is a rack of load balancers rack of SSL terminators so let's suppose it finds a, a application server it sends the packet, the same packet theta number, unique code, show timings to the application server. Now this application server uh, might not be connected to the database uh, of theta one. So it might, it, it can be a case that uh, database one is stores, database one is storing the information of all the theaters uh, somewhere in India, may, may not be all. Then uh, database 4 may be storing some um, theater information of all the theaters somewhere um, in Australia, somewhere in some part of Australia and so on. So uh, we will have a distributed data database and let's suppose the scenario which I have taken is that a user in India is trying to book a theater in Mountain View that is in US. So that's why this data center has to communicate with a data center which handles the database for the theater which is present in us so that's why it it, it goes it might go to some other data center now uh, <clears throat> this app server or the web server will respond back to the user using the zookeeper so what is zookeeper so zookeeper is a node which stores the data uh, in the Hadoop cluster, it can put and get the data. It helps in achieving synchronization, serialization, and coordination goals. So Zookeeper can be placed here. Now, this, the step 10 is done. Step 11, uh, on step 11, this on this data center, AWS data center, logs will be directed to the log storage. Then this live stream of uh, this incoming stream of the packet or the message is sent to the data analytics that is AWS Kinetics. So Kinetics is somehow similar to the Kafka or the stream processor. It just intercepts the real-time data and does the analysis. So now in analysis, what, what, ha what happens is that it will be attached to uh, a NoSQL database, maybe may DynamoDB, SQL database maybe or or. And uh, this AWS simple DB will be attached uh, for uh, like uh, AWS simple DB is attached for making the queries and uh, separate things on the SQL and non SQL database. Now this kinetics after processing the data, this uh, feed is provided to com combine and derive that is SageMaker. So what is a SageMaker? SageMaker is uh, AWS AI powered uh, node which helps admin to derive the meaning and write rules so it's sort of a UI form um, which has AI running on it and this does the analysis and this combines and derive it and then it can be combined with the Amazon uh, EMR that is elastic map reduce so after doing these steps um, this app server will send the message to the um, to the server uh, to the to the database server a database updater in us so now it's in a separate data center altogether so let's suppose the query goes the same message goes to the data center this here it will be internet again in between and there will be a process or a node called the database updater so this database updater will send the message to amazon rds RDS is uh, RDS is again a node which is used for uh, updating managing SQL databases and 
uh, for for configuring making the SQL databases up it, it you updates the SQL databases so that's why RDS comes here now in this case uh, that the important part here is there will be two different SQL databases for as one as a user database one as a theta database then there will be the replica pairs for it after the information is fed it will send the act to the database server and it will push the newly created uh, entry that is theta ID unique code and uh, the, the seeds and show timings using Amazon SQS onto the price calculator service. So what happens here is that this price, this Amazon SQS is MOM that is it's a, it's a, a messaging oriented middleware on which the tasks can be pushed and other side will uh, pop the tasks. So now in step 16 movie name client IP and number of tickets will be pushed popped by and the price calculator service based on the movie name client IP and number of tickets and location of the theater as well the price will be calculated and the prices will be sent to pay gate for example the client IP address is from India price theater is in US so the price will be calculated in dollar the price pay gate AWS pay gate will convert the dollar into INR it will send the message to the browser via internet that is there is a payment of 400 INR either you can pay using uh, card gpay or paytm once the payment is done it sends act to it via this small arrow in step 18 the pay gate will again be using amazon sqs and push the push the message to uh, <coughs> aws sns simple notification service so sns will send a message to the user once uh, so this uh, these might be two demons which are actually so there will be one more uh, Amazon SQS here. They will be popping the events and uh, getting notified out of it. So SQS again works on a publisher uh, subscriber model. So these will be subscribers. Uh, so whichever services which are subscribed to the no, to the MOM that is message oriented middleware, those will be notified. And finally, uh, AWS SES simple email service will fetch the event out of it and it will send the uh, email to the user so this is the high level design of it um, if you find any issues in it or if you find any corrections please uh, please uh, please tell me that in next video we will be covering in-depth details of the algorithms which will be used either on the web server or maybe database updater and the each and individual nodes out of it thanks a lot have a good day bye